911. He wants the address of the emergency. Hello? Hello? I need help now. Okay. Where are you? Where are you? Someone just got shot, so. You need to speed this up a little bit. Okay. Okay. Hello? 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 Behind that distressing 911 call was a woman named Brittany Jacobs, the girlfriend of 28-year-old Marquise McLaughlin, who had been fatally shot by a man named Michael Drake. At around 3.15 p.m. on July 19, 2018, Marquise, accompanied by Brittany and their three children, aged 5 years old, 3 years old, and 11 months old, arrived at a local Circle A convenience store that they regularly visited. It was a hot day, so the family needed to grab some snacks and drinks to cool off on their way back home. Given that the job wouldn't take much time, Brittany, who was in the driver's seat, parked at a handicapped space and waited in the car while Marquise and his five-year-old son climbed out of the car to grab the necessities. While Brittany waited for her boyfriend and son to come back, a vehicle approached her and parked square to her vehicle on an illegal spot. The driver, who went by the name Michael Draca, climbed out of the car and with no hesitation approached Brittany's car and began inspecting it, starting from the back and stopping at the front. As soon as he was done, he began pointing at Brittany to grab her attention and motion towards other parking spaces, indicating that she could park there instead of the handicapped space. Seeing that Brittany was unresponsive to his commands, he then asked her to roll down the window, which she did, and began to yell at her, pointing at other parking spaces and demanding that she park her car in one of those spaces. Brittany explained to him that it was a short visit and that she would leave as soon as her boyfriend Marquise and her son returned. However, this did not satisfy Michael and the two got into a heated argument. During the argument, Brittany had asked Michael if she needed to involve her man. Did you ever say to him, you know, leave me alone or I'm going to come out and I'm going to start, you know, taking your butt? No. Did you ever say to him, if you don't leave me alone, um, I'm going to get out and I'm going to do something to you? No. Ever threaten him? No. Is there something that you said to the defendant to let him know there were other people with you? I told him, do you want me to go get my man? And he said, yes, if you want him to fight. Now, while this occurred, a bystander who had just arrived at the store witnessed the loud, heated argument and proceeded to inform the store clerk about it. Upon hearing this, Marquise, who was at the counter finalizing his payment, immediately rushed out of the store. As soon as he saw that Michael was booming over his woman, Marquise became defensive of her and walked towards her, stating, quote, get away from my girl. As he did so, he also pushed Michael, resulting in him falling onto the ground. Unfortunately for Marquise, in a span of a few seconds, he would pay the ultimate price for simply protecting his family. After the shooting had occurred, unlike most criminals, Michael did not make a run for it. Instead, he reupholstered his weapon and remained in the parking lot, awaiting the arrival of the police, almost as if he was confident that he could get out of this. He was taken in for interrogation at 5.30 p.m. that same day, almost two hours after the shooting had occurred. Um, are they yours? No, no they're Eric's. He's been cooperative with me, though. I see. Yes. Yeah, that's on. Let's take him off. We're going to take him off. You're going to be cool? Yeah, okay. I don't know you. I don't know nothing about what's going on. I know. You have my absolute okay. word, sir. Okay. Detective? Yes. You have my word, detective. Mm. Uh, is your watch here? Is it a smart watch or anything like that? Uh, no, it's just okay. uh, Timex. No, no nope. smartphones, no nothing. Okay. First, I come up and take um, What's this? Later. Cigarettes. I don't like a problem. Is it the only thing I left in there? Okay. What's in that brown bag? There's uh, there's a. Okay. Hey, one more raid with a holster magazine with uh, some rounds in it. As evident from the start of the footage, Michael was calm and cooperative and seemed approachable, which is in significant contrast to his demeanor two hours ago. Hey, partner. Hey, hey my name's George Moffat. This How is you doing? Richie Rimmick, Chapman. Um, you've been sitting here for a while. You need to use the restroom right Yes, please. Okay. Let me, uh, let let me, me make sure no way out. <laughs> okay. Just hang tight. Yeah. You mind if I call you Michael? Yeah, is that okay? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, and you can call me George. Um, so just walk through. You you leave your house and you drive up to the store? No, I was coming back from the Wawa down on uh, Missouri and Rosary to okay. get some cash and head home. Stop by the store. Boom. Oh, okay. 
Okay. So you get to the store. Tell me, kind of walk me through what happens. Well, I park my car, and that's my store. I'm there every day, plain okay. and simple. And uh, every day there's somebody pulled in the uh, handicap spot there, just waiting on somebody. Okay. So I have a pet peeve about it. Sure. I you know, said, do you mind you know, moving? There's a spot next to her, and there's spots out front. I said, do you mind moving and waiting on somebody? And so there's plenty more spots. There's in the plenty more spots, okay. yes. And uh, she took that as an affront that I would speak to her that way. What Michael failed to admit was that he was never as nonchalant as he claimed to be when he instructed Brittany to move her car. Instead, he was yelling and becoming aggressive. Additionally, the detective can be seen agreeing to Michael's statement by adding his own to assure Michael that he is on Michael's side. This way, even if his actions are wrongful, he will remain truthful. So you walk up to her car? Uh, actually, I was walking around it. Oh, okay. Okay, because I parked here, she was here. Okay. Okay, so I just checked for placards, plain and simple. And, and she inquired about what, what was going on. So, okay. And that's when I told her you know, about the handicap spot. That's what did you tell her? I said, it's not very polite to park here when there's other people who need to use this. She says, is it affecting you directly? I said, if my mother-in-law rolls in, yes, it will be. So, okay. you know, there's nothing. It, there was none of that between us at all. Okay. No, nothing. It was just heated words, that's all. Okay. You know, I was speaking to her, I guess. Okay. Uh, she said, what do I have to do to get my man? I said, well, what's going to happen then? and a little more arguing back and forth, and I never saw what hit me from She was the driver of the car? She was in the car, yeah, She okay. was the only person in the car right. that I know of. You didn't see anybody else in the car? Tinted windows, almost dark, dark, okay. couldn't see through them. All right, so you guys are talking? Yeah, exactly, she's out of the car by this time. Okay. Standing next to it, that's all. Okay. And uh, I got hit from the left side, and thrown straight backwards in line with her car. So okay. If you saw this, if you saw the two white ladder lines mm -hmm. next to the thing, that's where I was standing. Okay, so I went almost straight back after I got hit. What do you mean hit? Uh, I was standing like this talking to her. Okay. I was hit from right here. The shoulder was pulled in front of me, and then I was... Oh, okay. And then All I right. hit the ground. Okay. Okay, uh, I'm pretty sure... We'll get somebody to take pictures of all yeah, I'm not worried about that too much, but... Uh, I'm pretty sure I landed my wrist uh, under my gun, actually. That's how I landed, because that's hurt like a son of a bitch now. So you landed on the pavement? Oh, yeah. Okay. I was on the ground. Uh, so at that time, I had to put hand down to get hand out from underneath. As I come out, I start drawing my weapon. As I start leveling off my weapon, he makes his next step towards me, and 21-foot rule. The 21-foot rule, also known as the Tuller rule, indicates the reactionary gap or distance it takes for an aggressor holding a weapon to attack an individual before the individual realizes to defend themselves using a weapon. Here, officers have been told to investigate suspicious circumstances at night in a warehouse and react to what they find. At first glance, this officer's distance from the suspect looks safe enough. But an attacker can easily cover this distance faster than most officers can draw their guns. Remember, when you close the distance between yourself and the suspect, do so only by purposeful decision. In fact, at close distances, your only realistic option for controlling a suspect is empty hand tactics. Yet when officers are asked how they would control a knife attacker, they usually say, I'd shoot him, forgetting that they may not have time to in reality. With a reactionary gap of about one foot or less, it's impossible for you to react quickly enough to even touch your holstered sidearm once the attack begins. At about five feet, the average officer can't even get his sidearm unholstered. Unless your sidearm or baton is already out, you'll have to rely on physical control at five feet or less. At about 10 feet, you might get your sidearm out, but you probably won't get a shot off. A suspect with a knife can close seven paces and deliver deadly force in less than one and one half seconds. For the average officer to deliver two rounds against an attacker who starts moving at 10 feet, 
the sidearm must already be drawn and ready to shoot. Tests with hundreds of officers reveal that in most cases, a minimum reactionary gap of 21 feet is required to react and deliver at least two rounds and to have enough time to move out of the attacker's path. However, in this particular case, Marquise was neither holding a weapon nor taking steps towards Michael as he claimed to do so. I'm on the ground already. Right. Okay. It happened so fast and that was that. Did he say anything to you? Negative. Not a word. Okay. Did you say anything to him? No. Like back up? Or? No. Okay. Okay. So you draw your weapon. Talk, talk to me about that from, from... Well, the way I was able to draw it, I couldn't even... I couldn't level it with one hand, so I had to eventually try and bring my left around for support. Okay. And uh, he made his step towards me, and that was that. How many steps did he make towards Just one step. Okay. And then that was that. Tell me, talk to me about that. What do you do from there? I made sure there's no other threat around him because it spun him a little bit, and he ran into the store, immediate threat gone. I did have her as a potential. No, I mean beforehand, before you fired the gun. Say, ask me the question. See, before you fired the gun, yes. Once you pull the gun out, yes. Okay. You said he stepped towards you. Yeah. Because I made one more step. Towards... Right. He made one more step towards me. And then what I, do you I, do? I, I didn't say a word. Gun okay. was already out. Okay. What do you do? Fire my weapon. How many times you fire the one weapon? One time, sir. Okay. So you fire the weapon and then basically just scan. Uh, I ended up standing up, made sure all of the threats were clear, reholstered my weapon. Okay. All right, so he didn't come back at you again or anything like Not that? Not after he left. Where did he go? Into the store. Okay. Did you strike him? No. No, I mean with a gun? No. I, I don't know. Okay. I assume so, yes, because there was an ambulance there. Okay. So you don't know if you had I know. I know nothing, but I would assume so. Okay. All right. So uh, what do you do? Talk to me from there after you reholster your weapon. What after I reholster my weapon, everything's clear. Uh, Somebody's screaming about hurt kids. Somebody's screaming about hurt kids. Uh, somebody thought they were in the car. So I said, everybody's inside, you know, to see if you can get her to unlock the car. Mm -hmm. And that, that was it. All I remember is screaming about kids. Okay. okay. What, what do you do from the, after you hear somebody talking about her kids? And stuff? Everything's all, well, I asked one person to go, you know, see if she can unlock her car from the inside, and then I decided to extricate myself from the situation completely and just back to my vehicle and wait for you. So I took my house, or I took my firearm out, unloaded it, locked it, left it in the car. And what, do you, what, you, what do you mean you locked it back? Yes. Okay. I loaded it, locked unloaded it back, waited for you. Okay. Did you unload mag or anything like that? Or? No, oh, God, okay. no. Just right. the one that was in the pipe. Okay. Um, so where did you store the weapon at? In there, inside the vehicle. Oh, it was in my holster. Okay. Where, where did you put the gun at? Though? Right on top of the center console. Okay, on top of the center console. What do you do from there? Wait for you. Okay. Do you make any statements to anybody? Negative. Okay, on the park a lot. Other than telling people it's probably not a good idea to be in here right now. Okay. Can you customers pulling in now? I spoke to no one else. Okay. All right. Well, I did inquire if he had his cameras on because I know he's got nine cameras in that place. You inquired to who? Uh, the, the clerk through the door. Okay. I'm pretty sure he was on the phone with someone. Okay, so did you make contact with him? You walked up to the store maker? I, I walked up to the store through the door. Okay. You know, and I'm gonna, we're going to kind of slow it down a little bit and kind of, because I'm going to be asking specific questions about the, about the incident. And again, just like you, you know, you were, just be truthful with me. Um, and th just because we got it there kind of dot her I's and cross her T's, exactly what happened. I know you kind of went through it a little fast or whatever, so we're going to just go back a little bit. Is that okay? Whatever you need right. to, brother. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Michael. So you get to the store. Yes. Um, where do you park your car? Uh, directly next to the uh, last parking space. Do you know northeast, southwest? Uh, facing south. Okay. So your your car is facing south yeah, in the last the store? In the last spot. Kind of furthest to the west, right? Furthest to the west, okay. correct. And you're pointing front to the front, you okay? Uh, it just twins it out. Okay. So you're pointing to the front of the store, your vehicle. Yeah, south. Mm -hmm. What type of vehicle do you drive, sir? Uh, uh, 06 Toyota 4 -wheel. Okay. What color is it? Uh, silver. Okay. Which All right. So you park there, you exit your vehicle to, all, like you normally do, go, mm -hmm. in, go inside the store. Sure. 
You always park up front like like that? Sometimes I'll park inside if there's nobody. Okay. On the west side? Parking, there's two parking spots down past the uh, handicap spot right there. Okay. Sometimes. Like by the bathroom area? You got it. Okay. So you exit your vehicle, mm -hmm. right? Um, like you always do, and you're getting ready to walk in the store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what, what do you see from there? Uh, no placard on the front of the car. Because well, I have to walk by the car to... So you approach the vehicle? No, oh, front of the vehicle, yeah. Okay. Um, and your intentions on walking around the cars to look for placards? It's always, yeah. Okay. What, what do you, you normally know? take pictures if there's, you know? Okay. You take pictures if you don't see no placards, or yes. you take okay. Where do you normally look for placards? Uh, license plate, uh, windshield, and the front. The detective repeats Michael's statement about taking pictures of cars without placards, almost to verify he is aware of such actions that he somehow feels entitled to do so. When you approached the vehicle, was the driver, did you make eye contact with the driver? I couldn't see the driver, the windows were so dark. Okay. I didn't know anybody was in the car. Right, truthfully. So her window wasn't rolled down? No, the driver's not time. Now. Okay. So you start walking around the car? Yeah, I walked from the front to the back and then just back up again. And okay. I took no pictures. I just, you know, we sure. assumed we'd go and keep going, you know, but then the window came down. Was the car running? I couldn't tell. It's, it made, it's so quiet. Okay. These damn cars. Uh, it doesn't sound anything like mine, which right. is like a. Stop so then when you come back around, is the window rolled down at that point? No, or? only after I get back up in front and she uh, on my way into the store and she asked me, you know. So she rolls her window down? Yes, sir. Do you make verbal contact with her first or does she, she make it? verbal contact with me first? Well, I explained what I did. I asked me what I was doing, of course. Okay, and so she asked you what? What are you doing? What are you doing? Car? Yeah, I and said, you said I'm looking for handicap placards, you know. Okay. And then it ensued with, well, what's that matter so, to you? Okay. And, uh, so when you, when you, when she rolls her window down, she says, uh, hey, you know, what are you doing? How far are you away from the car? To the front of the car. Okay, so you're standing at the front? Yeah, about the front of the car, which is the, are you on the, the sidewalk, yeah. Okay, so you're on the sidewalk. Yeah, I'm not exactly in front of the car. I'm on the sidewalk at the front of the car. Okay. So after you start talking to her, do you approach the driver's side of the car? Yeah, just uh, of course. I don't want to yell back. And right. With I, that's, yeah. uh, that's understandable. Yeah. So how far do you approach the vehicle? Um, Distance-wise, uh, approximately. God, it's, it's going to be, she's in the car. And it's, it's Let's say I'm, I'm the driver. She yeah. can probably smell your breath. You know, okay. After a while, it's not like I was leaning in her car or anything. Okay. Hopefully you yeah. can't smell my breath. Oh, yeah, hopefully you can't smell the line. <laughs> so you know. how, can you show me how far, let's say I'm her. How far do you come up to her? By the window. Okay, so a couple feet. Yeah, I'm not going to encourage into her car. All right. So you walk up to her car and you say, I was looking for mm -hmm. handy handicap placards. Correct. And then what does she say? Uh, what's it? Though Michael states that Brittany was the initial aggressor, this could not be further from the truth. According to the CCTV footage, it clearly depicts the moment Michael begins to yell in the direction of Brittany's car, which led her to roll down her window. Right. Could you see him do anything with his hands? He started pointing at me. Were you concerned at, any, at that point? Yes, I was scared. All right, what, you know, what were you thinking? I didn't know who this strange, suspicious man was. I didn't know. Did there come a point in time when you, you put your window down? Yes, I cracked it. All right, so you, you didn't put your window down all the way? No. He was yelling and pointing and telling me where I should park. He told me that um, you're parked in a handicap spot. I said, yes, I am aware. When my family returns to the car, I will leave. Did you raise your voice at some point in time? Yes. All right. Um, were you getting loud with him? Yes. All right. And, and tell the jury, why was it that you were now getting loud? Because I just wanted this man to just leave me alone. Just leave me and my babies alone. So, you guys are bickering back and forth. Um, next thing you know, you get pushed. I'm blind. Pushed nothing. Tackled. I'm okay. blindsided, dude. Okay. I'm on the ground hard. So he shoved you pretty good. No, he... I, for, what it felt like is he come running at me. Okay. Like full force. Dude, I haven't been hit like that since I was in my 20s. Okay. Once again, he lies to fit into his narrative that Marquise came charging at him. But according to the retrieved footage, Marquise is only seen walking towards him. Alright. So, he shoves you to the ground. 
You fall to the ground. Correct. Okay. Slightly dazed, not very. Slightly. Okay. Do you hit your head? Don't know. Don't feel anything. Okay. I don't know. So you don't feel sideways like this. I know this landed under my under my gun. Okay. So I landed on my wrist on my gun. Okay. Had to reach over to extract my hand to push yourself back. back. To push myself up off of that. And as I'm reaching and pulling around, he's standing in front of me. As I come up, he's taking a step towards me. Okay, now let's discuss that. The detectives are fully aware of what took place and that Michael's lying about it. To check if he can properly back up his narrative, the detective asks him to reenact the exact moment before he shot Marquise. Um, if you don't mind, could you sit on the ground real quick for me? That's where I was. I don't want you to hurt it. No, 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 no. Okay. We do. So you're on the ground, right? I'm on the ground like this. Okay. How far is the guy away? Front of the car. He's at the front of the car? Front of the so car. So he's on that sidewalk kind of curb area. No, he's in front of the car, off the sidewalk. Okay, right on the edge. You got it. So how far do you think he's away from you? I might have been right at the edge of the back of the front door. Of the car? Correct. Okay. All right, all so he's, he's up, up by the front this. tires. He's up by the front tires. No, further than that, man. Further than this. Further than that. Maybe okay. I was back further. About, he had to be further than that. Okay. So he's about this far, yeah. Or maybe yeah. even further. And as I come up this way, because I have to come up off my hand, all right, I bring the gun out with me. And as I'm coming back this way, it won't, I can't support it. So I hit this. Okay. And as what does he do? He, that's, as I come out like this, he's taking his step. Okay. Taking a step? Taking his steps towards me. Okay. How close does he get to you before you fire the gun? Maybe to the front tire. So it's, show me where. Tell me when to stop. Stop. Okay, so right here. Yeah. Okay. Um, was he charging after you? Two steps running. Okay. Well, he was. you're saying he was running? Well, it would have been running when he got out of behind the car. Okay. All right. I gotta get both. Okay. Yeah, I don't want you to hurt. So. Now, you what did you help? think then, Mike? Say again, what did you think when that happened? I've never been in that situation ever. I thought kicks were coming. Okay. So you thought he was going to... I thought kicks were coming, or at least he'd be on you top need, of you me. need help? No, I got it. Okay. okay. Left arm's pretty far. It was at this point that the detectives revealed to Michael that they had already watched the footage and witnessed a story much contrasting to his story. Hmm, for a moment there, Michael almost slipped out of his nonchalant, friendly demeanor and got defensive towards the officers. Uh, let me ask you a question. You mentioned early that you asked Mustafa about video and stuff like that. Correct. That there were, Do you think the video would show him charging it? Or it running should. At you? Okay. There should be an angle right on that parking spot. Okay. What happens if I told you that I looked at the video and in no time and point does he come running up towards you? He actually takes a step back. I would disagree. Okay. I, I'm just asking. Yeah, okay. I would disagree in a heartbeat. Okay. All right, so you said after he runs in the store and stuff like that. Did you see me get hit? Yo, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Where did you come from? Uh, if you don't mind me asking, where do you we'll come from? Off. Yeah, we'll get we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. For but did did she, did she uh she walks around the vehicle? Does she go anywhere? Do you see her go anywhere? She went to the front of the store. She was inside for a while. Then she got in and moved her car. Okay, so she came back outside the store. She did. Did you guys have any discussion? The only thing I said to her was somebody's trying to see if you've got keys for your children. Okay. Did, um, when the gentleman, before you fired the gun, did he make any threats towards you? I After never he heard a you? word. Okay. So he didn't say, I'm going to kick your ass? I never heard a word of anything. Let me, let's kind of back up because I'm, I'm just trying to understand. <clears throat> Excuse me. Before... Um, you you shoot him, okay? Um, and he sh he had already shoved you, right? You said you thought he was going to come kick you and basically finish the job. Uh, yeah. Okay. Did you hear him make any statements? Negative. He never made a word. Okay. Like I'm fired. coming to. I'm never coming said to a word until I fired, but then I uh, never said a word when he dumped me either. Right. So you never said. What, what no, the hell, sir. Dude? Just want to talk to you to kind of uh, 
seal up a few things and go over a few more things. Is that all right? Just to go over, just kind of clarify things. Clarify away. Did you, when you looked up at this gentleman, I know you, it was so quick. Um, did you see his physical bill or did any of that go through your line? Medium height person. Okay. In a fair fight, you think you can take him? Negative. I do not fight, never have been a fighter. Never? Never. Ever? Ever. All right. I didn't even fight in school. So you didn't like mm -hmm. think go through your mind, holy shit, this guy's huge. Nope. He's gonna Okay. So your body can be anything. Sure, absolutely. Huge has nothing to do with it. Right. That. No, I agree. Absolutely without a doubt. Um, but it goes through your mind that he's coming to finish his job. Very correct. Okay. I mean what do you th finish the job, what do you mean? Whatever he started, I have no clue what he started and what his end game was. Right. Okay. I was in the dark about that, so that makes me believe to myself I need a force multiplier because I don't know what's going on. What do you mean a force multiplier? What is exactly? What you know? A force multiplier? No, sir. I don't. Really? If I did, uh, <laughs> I, I don't. I really don't. Well, a force multiplier is a sidearm. Anything okay. other than your hand. Okay. All right. I got gotcha. you. A stick. Some type of web force multiplier. According to experts, the phenomena of the word force multiplier is mostly used in the military setting, specifically in procurement, which explains why the detectives were unaware of it. It refers to, and I'm specifically quoting the textbook, any activity or equipment which increases the combat effectiveness of a military grouping without actually increasing its firepower. In other words, if there's a conflict between two individuals, the, uh, the law enforcement officer or that individual is trying to talk the other individual down. So it starts with negotiation first. After that, if it, if it escalates, it's always the aggressor or the other person who's escalating. The law enforcement officer or the military personnel or whoever the good guy is, I guess you could say, uh, they're, they're reacting to what the other individual is doing. So once that other individual escalates, then it's up to that law enforcement officer. We always say we go a step above. So you, you never give the other individual the upper hand. Uh, the force continuum is basically saying if that individual pulls out a knife, I don't have to pull out a knife and get into a knife fight with you. I can pull out my firearm and use my firearm. Per what the expert said, Michael's usage of the terminology force multiplier is incorrect, as he felt the need to apply the force multiplier phenomena solely because he couldn't predict Marquise's next move. However, for this phenomena to be used, Marquise had to have been holding another weapon other than his hand, but he did not. This further proved that Michael was intimidated by Marquise's size and opted for a different approach, as he knew that he couldn't deal with him, despite earlier claims to Brittany. And I just want to tell you this, you know, just to let you know, the gentleman you shot is deceased. Thank you for telling me. Nobody else would give me what's up. So, um... I did ask. Okay. Uh, you got any questions for me? Or anything? Uh, other than the standard ground thing, and I did exactly what I thought I was supposed to be doing at that time, considering what was happening to myself. No, sir, I don't think I have anything else to say. Okay. All right, approximate time is about 2,200 hours. Interview will be concluded with Michael. Now, despite the compelling evidence and prior compilation of similar incidents, based off Florida's Stand Your Ground law, Michael was not arrested. Well, that was until 25 days later, after many protests, he was arrested and charged with manslaughter. He did what he thought he had to do in the moment, in split-second timing, given that he was attacked. He had no time to think. He had no time to analyze the situation. He was attacked, he was blindsided. Remember, we live in America. Mr. Drake is presumed not guilty unless the state is able to overcome that presumption by evidence and testimony. We respectfully submit to you that that has not occurred in this case, that there is reasonable doubt. Common sense tells you that. We know how divisive this case is. Mr. Drake did what he thought was necessary to terminate a threat a clear threat against his life. 
So when you look at the evidence, now the evidence in this case came from that witness stand, and it's from all the exhibits up there. When you look at all of that, we've proven beyond a reasonable doubt that that defendant is guilty of manslaughter. To prove the crime of manslaughter, the state must prove the following two elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Number one, Marquise McLaughlin is dead. No issue with that. Uh, unfortunately, number two, Michael Draca intentionally committed an act that caused the death of Marquise McLaughlin. Okay? So, did he intentionally shoot him? Yes. The way this case has been framed for you is whether or not this defendant was justified in shooting Marquise McLaughlin. But I'm going to frame it a little differently because based on the evidence, and really here's the million dollar question. We've heard so much evidence, okay? But here's the million dollar question you need to ask yourself. Was this defendant justified in shooting a man that came out to protect his family while he's retreating while he was unarmed? That's the million dollar question. It was the most perfect shot he could take. Hit him right here, traveled through his lung, through his heart, rested on the other side. The most perfect shot he could take. Didn't hit him in the toe, foot, knee, calf, thigh, stomach. The most perfect shot. Did he reasonably believe as Marquise McLaughlin was backing up and turning to go into the store that he was about to die? Because that's what that instruction says. Did the defendant reasonably believe he was going to die as Michael McLaughlin backs away when that firearm comes out? Was he about to die? Was this defendant about to die or be beaten to a pulp when he took the first step back? Absolutely not. What about the second step back? Absolutely not. He's getting farther by. What about the third step back? Absolutely not. What about when he turns to go to the store? Absolutely not. And when you look at those still photographs, you'll see that Michael McLaughlin's foot is facing where he wants to go. And the only reason his eyes are on that defendant is because he's looking at the firearm that's about to kill him. On August 23, 2018, Michael Draco was found guilty of manslaughter with the use of a firearm. And on October 10, 2019, he was sentenced to 20 years in prison for the murder of Marquise McLaughlin. The defendant is guilty of manslaughter as charged.